How is it going, you lovely lot? Welcome back to Park to Prem. Today is episode number 88 today. Europa League semi-final. And I think it's safe to say that today's opponents are an unlikely team. Uh, certainly not a team I'd envisage and imagine having to play in a Europa League semi-final. We're taking on Aberdeen, managed by João Mario. I, I kind of love that. The thing that makes this absolutely absurd is in the Cinch Premiership, the top division of Scotland, they're in 10th place. They are not a good team. How have they got to this stage, I hear you ask? And well, the answer to that is they finished 15th in the group stage of the competition with four wins and four defeats in eight games. And through the knockout rounds, they demolished Club Cluj, they then beat Club Bruges 5-4, knocked out Celta Vigo, who finished second in the group stage on penalties, and now they've matched against us. I've had many people over the years ask me, Jack, do a Scottish park to Prem, do Scottish away days. Well, we're doing a Scottish away day today. I hope you who have been asking for it are going to savour the moment. Today we're heading to... Pitadry. Pit Pitadry? It's probably not said like that. Pitadry, though. I have only played two games since last episode, but let me tell you now, despite losing one of those games, the title fight is alive. There are two points separating the top four in the Premier League. There's four games left of the season. Lots to catch you up on. Let's run the intro and brace ourselves for a pretty huge episode. Yes, gang, I hope you guys are doing absolutely amazing. Last episode, we headed to France for the second episode in a row. Today, we're heading to a bordering nation in Scotland. But first things first, let's talk about games since you were last here. Two matches played. First of those, 4-0 win against Wolverhampton Wanderers. A really good result, this one. I feel like, historically, we've done quite well against Wolverhampton Wanderers. In this game, Bolton, 8.2 rating, man of the match. This guy is having a sensational season. 8 goals, 7 assists, 7.43 rating. When you look at how consistent he's been as a right-back in the Premier League, I think it's safe to say at this point, the decision to make him a right-back was the right one. So that last result against Wolves I was delighted with. This one significantly less so. We took the lead on the road at St. James's Park against Newcastle. Sam Faye with the goal for us. And then we threw it away. This was a tough game. Newcastle are a team challenging for European football this year. But knowing that had we won this game, we'd be top of the Premier League with everyone on the same number of games played. It's hard not to feel like this one stings a little bit. Sandro Tonali with a goal. He then whipped in a corner, which we couldn't deal with. And yeah, we succumbed to a 2-1 defeat in a game which, when you look at the stats, we probably should have won. And with the latest round of results, the table is looking absolutely ridiculous. You can see here, Arsenal on 71 points. We are on 69 points. Man City on 68. Liverpool on 69 too. The four teams at the top separated by, well, just a small amount of points. And I want to claim we are just some mad team this year playing amazingly. The reality is that whilst we are improved from last year... This has just been a weird Premier League season. The teams at the top have lost seven games. That is unheard of. Just for a little bit of context, four games left of the season. If a team was to win all of those, that's 12 points. So if Arsenal won all their remaining games, they would be on 83 points for this year. Last year, 83 points would have only got you second place. And as for ourselves, well, this year, we could get 12 further points and end up on 81 points. That would struggle to get you in the top four, historically. It is kind of crazy that, that so many teams are just slipped up so far this year. Arsenal were the team top who had it all in their own hands. They had loads of games in hand. As you can see from their recent results, albeit some tricky games here, they've choked quite a lot. They have also got Liverpool to take on at the weekend. Our game at the weekend, by the way, is Crystal Palace. I feel like I have to do that game as well today. Three matches today. Does that sound good? If we aren't going to do that, probably need to get into the away day immediately. We're heading to Aberdeen. Not been to Scotland before for an away day. Let's see what it's got in store for us. So for today's away day, we are heading north, we are heading to Scotland, and we're heading to Aberdeen, which is pro probably the furthest north I've ever been for an away day in the British Isles. I realised earlier I said we're going to Scotland for the first time for an away day. I think we did Rangers and Celtic Park last year, so that was just a lie. I feel like the football stadium should be really easy to spot, and yet I, I can't find it. Although, have I, f I found it? Okay, I'll take it all back. Here we are at the Pittadry Stadium. Firstly, car parking. Gravel car parking, not tarmac Controversial. Some news for away day fans. I was going to say some good news because I saw one dot. There are two dots around the ground and then street view. We might be short of options today. 
I love the fact that this road that the stadium is on is called Golf Road, and then there's just a golf course next to it with a driving range. I mean, they really fought hard, didn't they, when they named this road? Uh, here is the football stadium. Why does it look like a factory from the outside? I mean that in the least offensive way possible. It just, it looks quite industrial. You know what? In an age where I complain about stadiums being copied and pasted, I do kind of like this one, and I love the fact it's just a club shop. No superstore here. I take back what I said earlier about it being gravel. I think this is tarmac. It looks like the tarmac they use for cycle lanes. If you've ever wondered where does the red tarmac go when they've done pouring cycle lanes out, uh, it goes to Aberdeen's car park to make it bigger. Here we are. Uh, how much does it cost to park? Uh, it authorised users own. Okay, it's exclusive. Do th that's not very kind of of the people, is it? Let's have an exclusive car park. Don't know how I feel about that. I have to say, the actual stadium itself, it's got that proper football's old school stadium vibe. I mean, even the floodlights just look vintage, don't they? Soul, spirit, tradition. AFC. I'll tell you what, this is one of the most unique exteriors to a stadium I've ever seen. They really did commit to painting it red, didn't they? I wonder if the guy who painted this side of the stadium is also the guy who painted the red bit, uh, Lil, last at away date. It could be the same bloke, although he's not spilled any on the floor here. I feel like I've done a lap of honour around the stadium here. Can we discuss this? This is very cute, isn't it? You got like a little, little booth here, little hill with a mound and the scoreboard. Oh, I kind of love it. Now, like I already mentioned, there is only one dot here that looks like it might be in the stadium. And, oh, they've ruined the away day. They've, it's not in the stadium. It's ruined. We've got this fantastic looking stadium. I think this stand here on the south side is actually built on a hill. And we'll never know because I can't actually look at it on a hill. The closest I can get is here. My disappointment is immeasurable. I want to try and salvage what I can by going on uh, Google Earth and seeing if we can view it in 3D. Here is the stadium. I'm a bit confused as to why this stand behind the goal is the biggest ground. You know, typically, one of the stands that runs the length of the pitch is the big one. Not here at Aberdeen. We love the golf road end. I'm trying to work out what's going on in this corner here. This is just built into a hill, which I very much appreciate. It's a cool aesthetic. I assume that is a scoreboard there. We saw there was like a booth with roads up. I mean, in terms of football stadiums, I can't work out if I love it or hate it. I mean, it's got a very unique aesthetic, so I can't complain about that. It didn't have a superstore. Car park isn't painted, but at least it's unique. I just wish there was some footage on the inside. It would score so highly. Also, you're just next to the sea. Didn't really mention that. You know, you can do your away day, then go build a sandcastle. Okay, the Pittadry Stadium. Fun away day. Bit quirky, bit different. I'm going to give it a reasonable score for that. Six and a half out of ten. I've been like, that is pretty fair. Anyway, with all that said and done, we are going to get into this game here. A big must-win game for us. Although, you could argue at this point, the league games are as must-win as well. But for this game, I am going to play a full strength 11. Hopefully, we can do what we've done in the previous few rounds get a really convincing result here that allows me to rotate things for the second leg and keep a fresh team going in the league of course we're third in the league right now Liverpool and Arsenal have still got to play one another we are in a title fight with four games left and it feels weird saying that it's not really felt like that at any point during this year when it comes to the Premier League I think mostly because so many teams have had games in hand on one another of course Arsenal had loads of games in hand and they've choked them all otherwise they'd be way clear but suddenly the door has been opened and yet I, I feel like I want to win the Europa League as well like in a weird way there'll be future seasons won't there to win a Premier League title even if we choke it this time I'd like to think we're never competing in the Europa League ever again in past parts of Prems you know you get to the Champions League and with the old format if you maybe choked the group stage finished third you ended up in the Europa League that can't happen anymore with the new format which is a crying shame really but what it does mean is this might be the last day we get to see you know the iconic black and orange of a Europa League night. And with that in mind, I want to be at our best. Although Aberdeen, 10th place in the Cinch Premiership, they're going to want to cause an upset. Her dad going to be the man trying to stop it happen. Aberdeen with a corner on the near side. Clarkson is over it. Is Hamilton or May in the middle? The answer is no. We're going to get it away from danger. Misiak, next-gen runner-up. He's just going on a little wander. He's playing it to Rojas. There's options in the middle, and there's also Sam Face stood 10 yards offside. I haven't really thought about this before. Sam Face, Scottish, playing against one of the biggest teams in Scotland. I wonder if he's enjoying this game. Do you reckon he'd get booed or cheered by the Aberdeen fans? I reckon booed. I guess he'll get booed if he does two over-a-top celebration if he was to score. Yeah, to be fair, it's not like we signed him from Scotland. You know, he was born and bred in, in rugby. His dad was Scottish, I believe. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. I'm not caught up on the, the Faye lore, so to say. But, well, Rojas is in behind. It falls to Faye. He 
puts it in the bottom corner. That happened so quick. And yeah, it's offside. That was a weird goal. It, like the reflex for him to shoot there, it was like a cat. Sadly, the cat was offside. Cat's notorious for not knowing the offside rule. Meanwhile, Hood had been called into action again. Not even 20 minutes played here. There's been a few chances either way. I feel like Aberdeen have been testing her dad a little bit. So far, he's been up to those tests. And so now, Sanfe, he had one ruled out. He has a chance to score here. And he's not going to miss this chance. It's his 23rd of the year. The more I look at him, the more I watch him, the more I think he's a striker. You know, we tried him as a striker a few years ago, and I wasn't sold on him. So we took him back and put him as an attacking midfielder. This year, with Ospina moving on especially, he's playing in that attacking role alongside Rojas more and more. And he's just making it work. I realise as well, the thing I've not acknowledged during this European run that I have seen a few comments about, and it's to do with the fact the camera reverses the side it's on for replays of goals in Europe. I have no idea why it does that. It was the case in Football Manager last year as well. I, I Yeah, I, if anyone knows why in European kind of competitions only the camera flips, I'd love to know. It's not a setting. Obviously, you can change the setting to have like a reversed replay camera and stuff in your options. But for whatever reason, European competitions, they just like to flip the camera. It's confusing for me as well. Let me tell you that now. Anyway, Aberdeen here, half an hour played. They've held firmer than some of our previous opposition in this knockout stage. However, they are going to be tested, you imagine, in this game still. Fawns, defensive midfielder, loses the ball, but then works very hard to get it back. Bolton, whipping in. Misiak is there. Misiak scores. It's his eighth of the year. He's not perhaps been as prolific in the final third as, say, Pietro alongside him when it comes to goals and assists. But since we've changed the player role of Misiak, do you feel like he just gets forward that little bit more? And on this occasion, he's there for a header. We had four players to aim for in the middle. Misiak nods it down, doubles our lead. <sighs> Breathe. Feeling good now. To be fair, I feel like when you look at Aberdeen's league position, we really should be coming into this game as favourites. I feel like we've had a very fortuitous draw through the Europa League. I feel like we've not had a particularly difficult game with respect to the teams that we've played. You know, it's kind of a miracle that we've avoided other Premier League sides and kind of other, well, I was going to say major Spanish, German and French sides. But of course, we've played two French teams. I guess uh, you could argue Lille were a proper opposition for us. I don't. I feel like I'm just sound like I'm digging a hole for myself here by insulting Aberdeen. They're just not a team you associate with Europa League semi-finals. With respect, so I feel like they flute their way here, and now they're coming undone. I was going to say on the big stage, Pietro's missed the target there. I just bigged up his finishing and how he'd been better than Misiak. He repays my faith with that miss, but the good news for us is it is half time. We've been in control. I'm very happy. There is part of me wondering if, should we run ahead in this game in the second half, maybe I can make some subs to rest some legs. We have got Crystal Palace at the weekend. They are a team in the bottom half, a team that we should probably be winning against. But at the same time, you know, if we get another goal here, resting players for that game feels like it'd probably be a sensible thing to do. Fawns to Rojas. Options on ahead for Rojas. He goes back to Riviere. Misiak. Rojas. What build-up play that is. What a goal that is. A cheeky little chip by Rojas over the keeper. Makes it 3-0. Intricate passing in the middle was really nice here. Laying it back to Riviere. He spreads the play. Misiak catches the run of Rojas and he dinks in. That's a really good finish by the Costa Rican international. With that third goal scored, I have just made a few subs. Areco's on, Curlin's on, and also um, mascara's on i just want to rest the legs of the likes of bolton um rojas and co i feel like this is done now isn't it three nil job done even if we concede one or two we're in a great position going into the second leg at home and even players like curlin do i'm subbing on i don't feel like that like they're the kind of players to come on and have a jolly he wants to prove a point he wants to make his stamp on this game the danish attacking midfielder bags his ninth here i am talking about weakening the team the players i'm bringing on to weaken the team Fine in the back of the net. Have just made two more changes just to keep things fresh. A couple of players who I really don't want to get injured ahead of our upcoming run of league games. This game here finishes 4-0. Was fairly straightforward in the end. I'm pretty happy with the performance there. What we somewhat expected. What it does mean is for the second leg, we'll do it recappily. We don't need to dignify Aberdeen by showing the full gory details of us dismantling them at home, I think. For the people of Aberdeen, you know, it's just not fair. Misiak did pick up man of the match in that game. Really, really good performance by him. Over in the other semi-final, Freiburg v Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg, if you just have a look, seventh in the Bundesliga. Freiburg, they actually play in the Bundesliga at the end of the year. So that these two teams are going to be sick of one another. Currently sixth and seventh 
respectively, in the league. I feel like either of those we should be able to beat. Anyway, like I already said, we rested up some players. I am going to do this game against Crystal Palace because it is a really important one. I am also aware of the fact that on Saturday, I believe Arsenal and Liverpool play one another. So you know what? Rather than me just skipping forward to our game, let's do a reveal of the uh, the kind of upcoming match on the Saturday. You know, we'll prove there's no shenanigans going on in terms of me trying to get the two teams to draw. Liverpool and Arsenal playing one another live. I'm going to go with an Arsenal 2-1 win. I don't know why. I'm feeling an Arsenal 2-1. What is going to happen here? They're playing at 5.30. Arsenal, the home team. What's the result going to be? How many times I gonna have to hit continue here? Hurry up, football manager. Okay, this is big. This is actually kind of significant. Also, Man City playing as well, if I'm not mistaken. Arsenal lost 3-1. Where are Man City? Man City won 1-0. Oh, I mean, wait, does, if we win our game by more than three goals, we go top on goal difference. I didn't realise that was even a possibility with the way everything was lined up. Oh my word, there's actually pressure on this Crystal Palace game now, isn't there? A win and we go top with three games left of the season. Crystal Palace up next. Our remaining league games, by the way, Aston Villa, Stoke, West Brom. <sighs> Aston Villa in seventh. The other team's in the bottom half. We have a chance to win the league, but we have to seize this opportunity. Crystal Palace is the first test. Okay, game number two for us today, Crystal Palace. I feel like suddenly we're in a title fight where I really want to be winning the league. I'm a little bit conflicted because obviously... You want to win stuff on YouTube, but I feel like winning the Premier League in your second seat, that would feel silly. It'd feel too quick. Even I can acknowledge that as a creator, but at the same time, we've still got some tricky games. This one today is going to be a test. I think Aston Villa in our next league game, which I feel like we'll have to do in next episode, is also going to be a big one. This game here, though, I think we are just going to go with the full strength team for. I have rested up the players since the European game. And I don't really want to touch anything. Now, to be honest, Crystal Palace have been a little bit of a bogey team for us. They've also got Guerrero. So it is the return of Guerrero today. I'm going to tell the players this is a game we should be winning. My expectations are high. We are going to, of course, be lining up with our 4 2 2 2. I'm wondering, is Guerrero going to be at striker, attacking mid, maybe on the right hand side as well? He can play a few different positions for them. Uh, he will be playing as their striker. You can see Crystal Palace's form is really bad. I feel like we should be winning this one. If we win it by, I believe, three or more goals, we go top on goals scored. And if we score four or more, we'll go top on just total goal difference. So every goal matters at the moment. Well, if you're expecting an explosive start to this game, it's not really happening so far. 18 minutes played, finally a first highlight. Misiak over a corner, whipping it in. Dexter Sneddon with his fifth goal of the season. I'm kind of surprised he's got as many as five. I feel like Bolton is usually the man getting on the end of headers. On this occasion, though, it's the other English defender in our ranks. Misiak outswing it to the near post, and Sneddon leaps ahead of everyone and nods it on target. So far in this game, possession actually just been edged out by Crystal Palace, but we are the team creating everything. Until now, Elise whipping it in back post. Rodriguez half heads it away. Lee Min nipping at the heels of the attacker. Nearly cost us, but now, with us leaving two men forward on corners, we have a chance to make something happen on the counter. Sam Fay cutting inside. Options in the middle. Rojas' glancing header goes ever so narrowly wide. It was so close to beating two. Coming up to half time in this game, Crystal Palace yet to have a shot on target. Kind of reminds you of the game that we did last episode against Brentford, where we weren't amazing, we weren't super convincing going forward and scoring a load, but defensively, we just didn't really let up any shots. Uh, worth noting, actually, Haddad already has 12 clean sheets for the season in goal. I believe the league leader only has 14, so despite the fact that Haddad doesn't actually have a particularly good rating, in terms of what we're doing defensively, as a group and keeping clean sheets it's right up there in the Premier League although I must admit this Premier League season is a weird one isn't it there's no standout team kind of being a defensive powerhouse at the back and scoring a load there's just a load of teams ourselves included kind of bumbling over the line it feels like either way we're going to try and bumble over the line here by getting a second goal that said Crystal Palace they've got players going forward Musa played forward Guerrero Scores. I think he's offside. I want to believe he's offside. We can't have one of our own hurt me like this. Jaime Guerrero, don't do it. There is a goal review going on. Is this goal going to stand? It actually is. Guerrero. Imagine if we don't win the league because of this result here and because of Guerrero. How close was this to being offside? 
I think whoever that is on the right side of Bolton played him on just. Crystal Palace have had one shot all game so far. Uh, they've now got another chance uh, to get their second shot on target. Moose is very slowly getting off the pitch for them. He's not in a rush at centre mid. Crystal Palace now down a man. And yet they've got the ball in a dangerous area, potentially. Elise, options in the middle. Jonathan Rose, one of them. Franca is the other, and it's 2-1. I mean, we've had awful results against Crystal Palace over the years. They have been a bogey team for us. I don't know how we're losing this game 2-1. I mean, look at, the, look at the stats. Look, they've had two shots on target. They've both gone in. Elise whipping it in. And this header in off the post. Uh, can't blame her dad for that one. I feel like we've got to be reactive off the back of that. Roger Rojas not having a good game today. Areco on Yukum. Pelagata off for Kurland. At left back, I'm going to take off Lee Min and bring in NDIA. I kind of just want to make a load of changes here. Rivier off. Anderson on as well. Anderson, by the way, recently breaking into the Danish nas national team is really exciting to see. Need his creativity from deep. In the space of five minutes, we've gone from leading in this game to trailing in this game. A must-win match as well, of course. Goal difference is all important, but getting the wins, most importantly of all, is the name of the game today. We are not doing anything in this game. I need to get shouty shouty. Shouldn't have demanded more, or maybe I should have done. Some players are crying about it. Some are delighted. Curland, edge of the box, Areco, the two subs, back to Curland. Options in the middle. Snedden scores... Again, there's a flag raised. Why is there a flag raised? Was he off? Who was offside there? I mean, Snedden was behind the ball when it was played in, right? There, there, it's going to be checked by VAR. I saw the linesman's flag up. The goal's not going to count. 17 minutes left. We still trail by a goal. Was it Curland who's offside here when this pass is played? Yeah, it is. I was going to say, the, the header couldn't have been offside. It was a great header as well, but... It's all for nothing. Okay, we are now trailing in this game badly. I need to commit players further up the field to try and just make something happen here. I mean, what else can I do? I'm going to go more direct, hit earlier crosses. I don't want to deviate from the game plan too much, but we just need to get the ball forward with a bit more intent. Would this be considered bottling the league if I don't win it from here? Like, because of this loss? Because I'm beginning to think it probably would be considered a bottle. Like I said, going into this game, it feels too early to be winning the Premier League, and I feel like football manager kind of agrees crystal palace 2-1 up still there is five minutes of added time there is three minutes left of it even a draw could be critical in our battle for each and every spot whilst top four feels like it should be assured there is significant prize money difference for every position every spot counts can we make something happen here sam Fay denied by the keeper i feel like over the years we've just not done well against crystal palace and i feel like that trend is not about to change here can we score something late the ball is whipped in it goes over everyone i really feel like that epitomizes this game today five minutes of added time it comes and goes crystal palace win this game completely against the run of play i'm gonna get shouty shouty and bizarrely, in a game where we could have gone top of the Premier League, we instead find ourselves sat in fourth place. That said, you know what? Three games left. A lot can still change. Next episode, we have Aston Villa to play to end the year, West Brom to play to end the year, and I believe Stoke City, who are bottom. I mean, based on where the teams we've still got to play are positioned in the league, in Aston Villa, Stoke and West Brom, you'd expect us to win them all. And yet, because of that defeat there, that might not be enough to win the league this year. Right, you know what? As frustrating as that game was, we need to dust ourselves off. We've got another game to play. This time, Aberdeen second leg. We won the first leg 4-0, so I think this will just be more of a recappy one. Going to rotate the team for it ahead of the Aston Villa game. That in itself is a massive, massive game. This next one should hopefully be a formality. This season has been such a weird one when it's come to the European games. I feel like the Champions League is going to be a bit of a shock because truthfully, we just feel too good in the Europa League. First leg win 4-0. Here is the rotated team that I've already lined up for this game. Kenji in at left back, NDIA sliding at centre-back. He's played here quite a bit this year. 18 appearances at centre-back. Really has been a go-to option there. Mosquera at right back is really unhappy at the moment about a lack of, I was going to say a lack of first team football. It's not even that. He just wants more money but when i go and negotiate with him a new deal he wants to be a key player i might be tempted to cash in on him in the summer i don't know if that is a blasphemous statement i feel like he's a good center back for us and he has improved a lot 
I just feel like for a 20 year old who's only ever been on the fringes of the first team, 80 to 90 million would be quite a lot. Of course, in the attacking department, we've got some pretty exciting options here. Ngoma, AFCON winner Ngoma. We really should insert that before all of his names. He's going to be playing in this centre attacking mid position. Four goals and five assists in the Europa League. He's having a really productive season, as is Areco. Seven goals in the Europa League for this guy. Sinkule, on the other hand, a player who I'm trying to give more first team football to to help his development. Easy to forget this guy is only 20 years old hasn't quite been as outstanding goal scoring wise but perhaps hasn't had the same opportunities as some of the other options i've just gone through so given the fact that we're four goals up in this game this should be a nice straightforward game let's hope we score some nice sexy pretty goals i'd love to keep another clean sheet as well clean sheets are nice aren't they uh looks like aberdeen are committing a lot of men forward are we about to lose the clean sheet immediately no we're not pike hits it off target well, this isn't exactly how I wanted this game to start. Uh, Aberdeen have just scored. I was caught off guard by it, it truthfully. Gardiner, the left back, putting it in. And then a great finish by Mosquera. I feel like he heard me say that I might sell him. And now he's done that. Is that match fixing? I feel like it could be. If they get the next goal in this game, do I need to panic Dixon for them on the near side? Imagine. No, it's not going to happen. They're not going to come back from four goals down. Not with finishing like that, at least. Bloody hell, that's not what I wanted to see here. For like 4-1 feels comfortable. 4-2, then, then it becomes squeaky bum time, especially knowing there's still about an hour left to be played here. Mosquera, a right back. I feel like he's got a point to prove here, having scored the own goal. There's players in the middle. Sinkule's shot is blocked. At least we're showing a little something going forward. Iwanemi, left back. Little throw in, given short and back to him. And now he's going to pull it in. For a record to score, but I can see the flags raised. The flag is not going to count. It's offside. It's still 4-1. We're losing a game 1-0 where the team that we're losing to have not yet had a shot on target. It's been that kind of game, but Ashley Phillips is going to pop up there and draw us level before the break. Jack, don't mention his crossing. Don't mention it. Good ball by Areco. Great ball by Areco. Good header by Ashley Phillips as well. Half time here. Hardly a classic, but 1-1. Knowing that we've got the first leg 4-0 buffer feels kind of fine, doesn't it? The rotated team are doing their job. Hikmet bringing the ball forward for us into the channel. Options inside goes on his own. Forces an acrobatic save out the keeper. An hour played in this game. Ordinarily, I'd be making some subs at this point. But to be honest, I just want to keep these players on the pitch. Give the first team players as much of a rest as possible. We've got a massive game at the weekend. And even if we do go on to concede one or two here, in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to matter. Ngoma playing it forward, Sinkule, Areco. I thought for a moment we were going to have one of our sexy passages of play where we knock it around with confidence. Instead, we surrender possession, but Mascara, still looking to make amends for his own goal, is going to bring it forward here. The right back's now on a 7.3 rating. So, having scored the own goal, he has bounced back well in this game. Still want him to try and create a little bit more for us as Jao Victor has the ball. Lays it back to NDIA. Anderson ahead. Lays it forward. Areco. Options in the middle. Sinkule's there. That is a beautiful goal. We take the lead for the first time in this game. 6 1 aggregate. 20 minutes left. Game over. You know what I said about Mosquera having a better game, making a men stepping up. Uh, can I take it all back, please? Uh, what is this? I'll just just click on it. Make sure we have his name showing whilst we witness that. If someone wants to bid 80 million in the summer, he is for sale. They're on the attack again. Dixon shoots. Dixon scores. They're winning 3-2. They need three goals in 15 minutes. I, I shouldn't be panicking, but there's a small part of me that is. This chance came from nowhere, by the way. Gelez, or G Gelez, he lays the ball wide, and then Dixon, one touch, bam. Maybe her dad could have done a bit better. Still refusing to make subs, by the way. Even if our players are getting tired, this game is done. 6-3 on aggregate. Three minutes of added time comes and goes. We are into the Europa League final. Areco, man of the match. And, well, I feel like all the job was done, wasn't it, in, in the first leg. A win's a win, but we have to do better than that. Against a better team, we would pay for that kind of performance. In the other game going on, Freiburg will be our opposition. Their media prediction in the Bundesliga is sixth. Their key man is this guy, Ji Jin Feng. He looks absolutely insane, doesn't he, as a fullback option. I like the look of this guy a lot. Apparently, I've got him scouted as well. Probably not worth 100 million. 
He's decent. If you're sat thinking, Jack, you didn't sound very excited. I'm just stressed. The end of the season is going to be too much for me. We've now lost three of our last four games. This is not the time where we really want to trail off our form. Now, looking ahead to the games that we've got to play, the Freiburg game is not actually the last game of the year. I feel like the Europa League normally is. Not in this universe. We have West Brom to play in our last game of the season. With that in mind, I think next episode we'll come back for the Villa and Stoke games. Depending on those results, we may not be in a title fight on the final day, in which which case full focus for episode number 90 will just be on the cup final we'll make a big deal of it song and dance and then do a bit of an end of season review before the transfer specials on the flip side it might be that next episode we're setting ourselves up to give ourselves that little bit of hope in the premier league and then we get a blockbuster end of the year with a cup final and drama on the last day uh, that latter option sounds more fun to me. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, if you did, leave a like. Let me know what you thought of the team performance down below. Do I need to be worried about these recent performances? A small part of me is, but I think it is obviously important to remember our media prediction for this year was ninth place based on our current squad strength. The fact that we're even remotely close to being in a title fight is a small miracle. I almost feel like the recent run of form is perhaps just more of a, of a reflection of where we're really at. Anyway, we will be back tomorrow to end the season with a bang. Take things easy. I'll see you guys then. It's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.